Evan. So far, this Brooklyn and Boston matchup is quite interesting. I mean, game two, KD and Kyrie both, I think, shot from worse than 33%. I think KD was four of 17, and then Kyrie was four of 13. What are your thoughts on this matchup so far? Yeah, it's been very interesting, especially from Boston's perspective, how they kind of shut down Kevin Durant so far. And that's the reason why they're up 2-0 right now. If KD had a, an average game the first two games, Jasmine, the Nets are up 2-0 right now instead of the Celtics. That's just how close the series has been so far. As that series heads back to Brooklyn now, I still think that series goes the distance. I can go six or seven games just because it's so tight these first two games. But the way that Boston's kind of won these first two games based around defense, based around stopping Kevin Durant, it's a good start for them. I think really at this pace, I would have said Nets in seven, but the way that the Celtics have played the first two games, I think Boston might have a chance here. I think that Boston, with the way they play the first few games, I think there's a really good chance this goes seven and they actually win this series. And I have to ask, there isn't really a timeline on Ben Simmons' return. He has been practicing. Do you think that that could be helpful down the road, depending on what happens here in round one? Yeah, I think with Ben Simmons, it's a really tricky situation for the Nets because he's a guy where he could help out your offense, but you insert a guy like him into your lineup at this point in the season. It could really distract the team. It could really kind of impact chemistry a little bit because they they never played with him before. So it'll be something to watch out for there for sure. If I was in the Nets situation and if they were down, let's say, three to one or at this point, two and out, I think you would just try Ben Simmons, see what happens there, because obviously Boston is figuring out the Nets a little bit. So I would try to try out Ben Simmons if possible, but it's a really tricky game they're playing right now because he hasn't played all season long. It's a new team for him. He's not a great shooter, so he can't really space the floor for you. So you're kind of throwing him into the fire and see what happens there. It's kind of a risky situation to be playing right now. And so far in round one, we're seeing some injuries. I know Luca is planning to come back, but Devin Booker with his hamstring. And then last night, Chris Middleton announced the MCL sprain. Kind of how concerning is that, not for just these teams, but moving forward for the playoffs? Yeah, it's huge from the Suns' perspective for Devin Booker because all of a sudden that series, I would have thought would have been a sweep. Now it might be going six, six or seven games based off of Devin Booker missing time now until at least game five for the Suns with a tight hamstring. And then as well, you look around the entire NBA, I think the biggest injury is Booker just based off how I think dominant the Phoenix Suns can be this year when Devin Booker's in the lineup. We saw he was on pace for 50-plus points in that game, Jasmine, so they got hurt in that game. So I think, honestly, Booker being out these next few games will change the series. I would have thought originally it'd be a four- or five-game series. Now I think it goes six or seven for New Orleans. It's going to be an early test for the Suns now, and I think, honestly, if Booker gets back, the Suns win this series. But we saw in game two how important Devin Booker is, is to the Suns team. I think he's still underrated in the NBA for how good of a player he truly is. So – if Booker gets back for the Suns, I think it's a huge thing. If not, I think the series could all of a sudden take a turn where we could be talking about the Pelicans leading the series three to one by the time Booker gets back for the game in Phoenix. Yeah. And let's transition into some picks for game three for Friday. First up, the Heat versus the Hawks. Miami, they lead the series 2 0. Who do you got? I, I love Miami here. I just think that the way they've shut down Trey Young so far has been super impressive. The Hawks' lack of depth to the injuries with Clint Capella, John Collins. I just think a lot is against Atlanta right now, just stacking up on the table against the Hawks. I think the Heat win this game, and I think, honestly, we're at a point now where I'm pretty confident the Heat win this series in the sweep, too. And for the Bucks and the Bulls. I think, honestly, this is a series to me where it's so interesting just the way the NBA works, how all these teams atop the standings in the East and the West are all losing these first few games and tying the series up and kind of giving home field advance to the upset team here. But I think the Bucs bounce back in a big way. Obviously, missing Chris Middleton now with a knee sprain is going to be huge for the Bucs. But I think Yonsa Tunacumpo is going to go off these next few games. I think the Bucs eventually win this series in five. But missing Chris Middleton is going to be a huge loss down the road for this Bucs team. And then lastly, the Suns and the Pelicans. I'm going to go New Orleans here. I seen the way that the Pelicans have been playing lately behind Willie Green as their head coach. They're completely locked in. They're completely bought in with him. And this group with Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum is awesome to watch when they're locked in offensively. No Devin Booker, I think, in New Orleans could be huge for this series. I think the Pelicans eventually split that in New Orleans. And this series goes back to Phoenix tied 2-2. So I'm going to go with the Pelicans here in game five. I think eventually the Suns push this to six or seven. 
And my last question for you, any predictions on who you got coming out on top for the East and the West? Who could we see in the finals? I got Bucks versus Suns part two, Jasmine. I think it's going to be one of those series where I feel like eventually it's just going to happen. It just feels like destiny again. We're going to get part two of Suns versus Bucks, an incredible final series last year. I even get part two in a rematch this year. Perfect. Thanks so much, Evan. Appreciate the time, Jasmine.